Hello, my name is Nikki Yarbrough. In this series, we will be explaining the OIC system and the equipment sent to you to use for input of the OIC information. This first tape in the series will be dealing with the equipment and has been separated into three segments. At the conclusion of each segment, you should stop the tape and take a few minutes to practice the procedures outlined. When you feel comfortable with that particular procedure, proceed to the next segment. In addition to this videotape series, you should have received a teletype model 4340 BAB BSR terminal, one of two acoustic couplers, and a box of paper. After removing the terminal from its shipping container, remove all packing material from outside of the machine. In the packing, you will find a plastic bag containing the cable for the acoustic coupler, an operator's manual, and a bottle of oil, and a ribbon. You are now ready to install the ribbon. On the front of the machine, there are two cover releases, one on each side. Depress these and raise the cover. Examine the inside for additional packing material. Center the print head and pull the print head locking lever toward the keyboard as far as it will go. Put the ribbon around the outside of the two rollers located on the left side of the terminal and pull the cartridge to the right, passing the ribbon between the print head and the rollers located in front of the print head. Place the cartridge on the magnetic bracket on the right side of the terminal, making sure it is securely in place. Now, push the print head toward the platen, moving the locking handle fully toward the keyboard, then pushing toward the platen until it locks into place. Close the cover. After the terminal has been unpacked and the ribbon installed, you are now ready to load the paper. To be assured that your paper will feed into the terminal freely, the entire top of the box of paper should be cut off and discarded. After opening, place the box of paper on the floor behind the terminal. Center the print head and pull the paper sensing lever towards you until it locks. Lift up the paper separator and insert the paper behind it, lining up the holes in the paper with the sprockets on each side of the platen. Release the paper separator and advance the paper to the, pa to the paper guide using the platen knobs. Lift the paper guide, which will release the paper sensing lever, and advance the paper under the guide, then close the guide. The terminal and acoustic coupler are now ready to be attached and the power supply connected. You will have received one of two acoustic couplers either a Radio Shack or a Techcom. The acoustic coupler is used to connect the terminal to the telephone lines, which transmit the data into the computer. On the back of the Radio Shack coupler are the power switch, the plug for the power supply, the transmission mode switch, and the plug for the terminal connection cable. On the top center of the coupler are the power and ready indicator lights. The power light will come on when the power switch on the rear of the coupler is turned on. 
the ready light is lit when a successful connection has been made to the terminal. The back of the TECCOM coupler has a power switch and the plug for the terminal connection cable. On the front of this coupler are the power and clear to send indicator lights. Also on the front of the coupler are three clear buttons, which should always be in the out position. If the orange tab is showing on any button, depress this button to bring it to the out position. The acoustic coupler is connected to the terminal by means of the cable which has a plug on each end. One plug has 18 pins and is connected to the left side of the terminal. The remaining plug has 25 pins and is connected to the acoustic coupler. Each connection has two screws which you need to tighten with a screwdriver to hold the plug securely. The terminal and the coupler are now ready to be connected to the power supply. Both the terminal and the coupler have three prong plugs, which can be plugged into any 110 volt outlet once the connections to the power supply are made. The terminal is turned on using the switch on the right rear of the machine. The power switch on the coupler is also located on the right rear. This completes the first segment of this tape. Please take a few minutes to review and practice the procedures just outlined. If you have any problems, refer to the section of your system's financial manual which deals with the terminal operations, section 042-10999. Now that the terminal is operational, let's review some of its technical aspects. Across the top of the keyboard are the control and indicator keys. To the right are the numeric pads and additional control key. Across the front is the alpha keyboard and to the left of the keyboard are the control and cap lock keys. Starting on the left is the term local. This places the terminal in a local access mode and if depressed will cause a disconnect if you are online. This key is used when you load the options, which we will explain later in this segment. The next key is term online. This will light when you are accessing the General Electric timeshare system to transmit data or pull reports. It indicates successful connection to the computer. The lamp will flash and then go off if your connection is lost. The term ready key, will, when lit, indicates that the terminal is ready to use, but not online. This key should light when power to the terminal is turned on. Next is the interrupt key. This key is only active when you are online and is used if you wish to stop your transmission to the computer. The lamp on the full duplex key should always be out when you are using the terminal. All interaction with the computer is done in the half duplex mode, which is entered by turning off this lamp. The alarm key is used to indicate an alarm condition, such as the paper running out or the cover not being closed. After the correction, the alarm, after correcting the alarm condition, depress the key to turn off the lamp. Next is the KP, or keyboard print key. 
This key must be on when you are ready to transmit your data and off when you are entering data into the buffer. The lamp will also be on when you are loading the terminal options. The lamp on the next key, Received Message Waiting, should never be used as we do not use this key in any of our activities. If it does come on during your transmission, it is an indication that your terminal options may be incorrectly loaded and you will lose your connection. The buffer is the memory storage area of the terminal. The buffer enter key is depressed when you are ready to load the buffer with your data. The lamp will flash on and off when the buffer is close to its capacity and should end your input and you should end your input of data at the first convenient stopping place. The next two keys, insert and string enter, are not used and the lamps should always be off. The send ready key is used when you are ready to transmit and your data from the buffer to the computer. After you have established your connection with the computer, you depress this key to start sending your information. The lamp will flash on and off as data is being sent. When all data has been transmitted, depress the key again. The numeric pad is used when you wish to use the pad for data input instead of using the numeric keys on the regular keyboard. The message clear key is used when there is a parameter in the options which needs to be deleted or the buffer needs to be cleared of previous activity. The group of keys on the right side of the terminal serves two separate functions, as a numeric pad or as a keyboard edit cluster. When the numeric pad is depressed, the pad key is depressed and the lamp is lit, this group of keys can be used to enter data instead of using the numeric keys across the top of the keyboard. The configuration of the keys is the same as a 10 key adding machine. When the numeric pad lamp is off, this group of keys is used in an edit mode. When in the edit mode, only two of the keys are used. The store key is used when you have finished loading your data into the buffer. We will use this in the next segment on loading and transmitting your data. The key with the arrow pointing down, called the next line key, is used when loading the options. The keyboard of the terminal is used the same as a typewriter keyboard, with a few exceptions. The caps lock key should always be depressed is all data entered into the computer must be in caps to be recognized by the system. The shift key is used only when you need to go into uppercase on the numeric keys, such as the at sign and the dollar sign. The control key is used only for special control functions and we will explain its use later in this segment when we load the terminal options and in the next segment when we input data into the buffer. Now let's discuss the loading of the options. When ready to go into the option mode, turn the power on to the terminal. This will cause the term ready and KP keys to light. If any other control keys are lit, depress them to turn them off. Go into the local access mode by depressing the term local button which will start flashing and will extinguish the term ready light. Depress the control key, which is on the lower left side of the keyboard, and hold it down. At the same time, depress the minus key, which is on the upper right side of the keyboard next to the zero. This will print the first prompt mnemonic in the option list, which is speed equals 0, 0300. If there is no change to be made to the to the option, depress the next line key, which is located in the edit cluster on the right side of the terminal. This will step you down to the next option. 
To change an option that has an incorrect value, simply type the correct value next to the wrong one and hit the next line key. This line will look like this. Speed equals 1200, asterisk, 0, 300. The 0, 300 being the correct value you have typed in. If an option has a value and there should be no, no value associated with that option, depress the message clear control key and then the next line edit cluster key. This will delete the value for that option without replacing it with another value. We will now step through each option, showing which values are correct for each option. Each value will be followed by an asterisk, so I will not mention the asterisk except on those options with no value indicated. Speed equals 0, 300. Stop U equals 1. Large key equals return line feed. Small key equals line feed. Left boundary equals 0, 0, 0. Right boundary equals 132. Form length equals 0, 5, 1. Horizontal tab equals lowercase n. Vertical tab equals lowercase y. Printer new line equals lowercase n. Double line feed equals lowercase n. Receive buffer, buffer size equals 0, 8, 0, 0, 0. Receive buffer remaining equals 100. Receive buffer low equals 500. Buffer full warning equals uppercase BRK. Receive buffer now low, lowercase n. Edit buffer warning equals 132. Answer back equals lowercase n. Message end equals asterisk only. Stop code equals asterisk only. Start sending code equals asterisk only. Negative response equals asterisk only. Disconnect equals asterisk only. Data link escape equals lowercase n. Parity type equals uppercase e. Receive parity equals lowercase n. Data set 212 equals lowercase n. Data set stop equals 1. Duplex equals lowercase h. Answer back message equals asterisk only. After the answer back message, the word done will print and a bell will sound. At this time, you need to store the options. This is done by depressing the control key again and holding it down while you depress the plus key which is located next to the minus key on the upper right of the keyboard. After doing this, the print head returns to the left margin and your correct options are stored in the memory. The term local light will extinguish and the term ready lamp will light. When making any changes to the options, which are lowercase letters, the caps lock key, which is located just above the shift key on the left side of the keyboard, must be unlocked before hitting any alphabetic keys. This will bring the terminal to lower case, which cannot be done with the shift key. Release the caps lock key, type the alpha key necessary for the option, then depress the caps lock key again before hitting the next line key to take you to the next option. 
Sometimes it becomes necessary to realign the paper with the top edge. This is especially important while pulling reports. To accomplish this, your term ready light should be on and the term online on if you have accessed the host computer. All others should be off. Now depress the return key. Next, depress the control key and hold it down while you depress the L key. This is also marked FF for form feed. This will cause the paper to feed up and align itself to the terminal's line counter. You should now manually move the paper to the top edge by using the platen guides. This concludes the segment on the technical aspects of the terminal. Please take a few minutes to acquaint yourself with what we have covered and spend some time working with the terminal. Your manual explains all the above procedures. Should you have any, any questions at this time, the filing number is 042-10999. When you feel comfortable with what you have learned, proceed to the final segment of this tape where we will discuss loading your data into the buffer and transmitting this data into the computer. In the first two segments of this tape, we have learned how to set up the terminal and make it ready for use. Now let's see how to load the buffer with your data and transmit that data into the system. When turning power on to the terminal, the ready and KP keys will light. Depress the buffer enter key, and if you wish to use the numeric cluster to enter your data, depress the numeric pad key. All data is entered in a batch format with each batch of data having a batch header as the first line entered. After the batch header, the data is entered as either account or statistic number, semicolon, value, and return. If an incorrect entry is made and you wish to delete a line before you have hit the return key, depress the control key, hold it down while you depress the X key. The X will not print if you have done this correctly but the line will be deleted from your file after it is transmitted. Then hit the return key and enter the data correctly as the follow on the following line. If you have made a minor key error and wish to delete one or two characters only, depress the shift key and then hit the underline key once for each character you, have, you wish to delete. Release the shift key and then type the correct characters then hit return to bring you to the next line. When you have completed your data file, end the file with an at sign. To store the information in the buffer, disengage the numeric pad key if you are utilizing it for input, and then depress the store key, which will cause the send ready lamp to light. Depress the buffer enter key to turn it off and the KP key to turn it on. When the information has been stored correctly in the buffer, you are ready to transmit to the host computer. Dial the GE access number, which has been given to you, and when a successful connection has been made to the computer, you will hear a high-pitched tone like this. Place the telephone into the acoustic coupler, making sure of the, the cord of the phone is to the rear of the coupler. When the phone is properly in place, the button on the front of the acoustic coupler will light and the term ready lamp on the terminal will light. Hit the H key on the keyboard several times to activate the equipment. The system will ask for your user number, which is FAL90 plus your three digit hospital identification number. In this example, we will use 175, a comma, and then hit return. The system will ask for your password, which you will enter over the mask of letters given by the computer for security. 
After validating your user number and password, the system will print a banner and ask for your security level number, a comma, and password. After validating this, the system will respond with activity and you will enter OIC, telling the system you wish to use the Operating Information Control Reporting System. At the second activity, type in tape. The system will want to know if you are entering data or parameters, in which case you will respond with either a P or a D. The system will give you an OIC file name, which should always start with a letter and end with a letter, and tell you it is ready for input. This indicates the system has opened a file in the host computer to receive your data and has given it a name for identification purposes. This file can only be accessed by you. To send your information, press the Send Ready key, which will flash as the information is being transmitted. When the at sign appears, all information has been transmitted and you may do your file editing. This completes the tape on the Teletype 4340. You should review this tape, practicing each procedure until you are comfortable with it. If you have any questions not covered in the tape, refer to your system's financial manual, section 042-10999, or call the Customer Support Center, and they will be happy to help you. Thank you.